For most of 2025, if you asked me which coding agent to use for the best results, the answer was relatively simple, Claude Code. It was safer, more polished and powerful and had more features. But in the last few weeks, OpenAI has upped their game and released GPT-5 Codex, which changes things. Now both tools sit at the very top of coding performance benchmarks. And the real question isn't just which is stronger, but which actually feels better to use day to day and how does each one shine when compared to the other. So both Claude Code and Codex CLI are terminal based coding companions. They're not just order complete on steroids, they act like agents that can read and write files, run commands and reason about your repository. They also hook directly into IDEs like VS Code and Cursor through plugins and extensions. So you don't have to live in the terminal if you don't want to. The difference comes down to focus. Claude emphasizes maturity and extensibility, while Codex pushes raw performance and simplicity. In terms of performance though, this is the closest race we've seen. On the gold standard, SWE or SWE Bench Verified Benchmark, Claude Sonnet 4.5 and GPT-5 Codex both sit around the kind of mid 70% range. In other words, they're basically equal or at least pretty close. Claude used to be clearly ahead, but GPT-5 Codex had arguably pulled slightly in front with more precise and refined results. That said, with Claude 4.5 now released, things are again very competitive. It makes the comparison more about style and workflow. Claude feels like a very versatile general purpose coding agent that I'd lean on for more creative or larger scale tasks, while GPT-5 Codex and the Codex CLI are particularly good for bug fixing, debugging and spotting issues. Personally, my workflow is to rely on Claude for the heavier, more far reaching work and then to validate and refine with Codex for precision. By the way, if you want to follow along with how these tools keep evolving, feel free to subscribe to my free weekly newsletter, which there's a link to in the description. Beyond raw benchmarks, the choice often comes down to the underlying models. Claude Sonnet 4.5 tends to produce more polished, aesthetic results. So if you're building out a UI or want code that feels a little bit more elegant, Claude is the natural pick. GPT-5 Codex, on the other hand, leans into logical precision and minimalism. It's excellent for business logic, algorithms and backend systems where you want tight, efficient code without extra bloats. Of course, you don't have to choose one or the other. Many developers mix and match. For example, use GPT-5 Codex in the Codex CLI to generate the business logic, then switch to Claude for UI or UX work where presentation matters more. Another thing to compare on is speed. Codex CLI is written in Rust and feels fast and responsive. Claude Code is built in Node, so it's a bit heavier and still smooth enough for real use. The bigger difference though is in the models themselves and how they cope with longer running tasks. Personally, I find Claude 4.5 Sonnet to be slightly faster at basic tasks, but when it comes to precision and getting things right, then like I said, you might want to lean on Codex CLI and GPT-5 Codex. Also, OpenAI's Codex offers Codex Cloud, where jobs run in parallel on hosted sandboxes. Claude doesn't have a hosted option. Instead, you wire it into your own setup like GitHub Actions if you want automation. In terms of price, here's where Codex has the edge. If you already pay for ChatGPT Plus or Pro, you get Codex CLI included. With Claude, Pro only gives you a moderate amount of usage, so you might want to lean towards the $100 per month max option. For hobbyists or small teams, that is a fairly decent jump. However, if you do like to mix and match and your main focus is coding, then a cursor subscription might also be a good option. In terms of features and modes, both tools let you pick models and tweak how much reasoning they do. With Claude, you use keywords like UltraThink to push it deeper. With Codex, you just set it explicitly, high reasoning, for example. They both handle code diffs and reviews well, but with different vibes. Codex keeps things clean and minimal, while Claude feels more polished and cautious. Extensibility is where Claude really shines though. You get custom slash commands, hooks, and full MCP support. That means you can build reusable workflows, enforce coding rules, or hook it straight into CI or CD. 
Codex CLI is simpler. You get approval modes and exec mode, but if you want automation, OpenAI expects you to use Codex Cloud. In terms of usability and UI, Claude code feels more polished in the terminal, in my opinion. The status line, approvals, and prompt all feel carefully designed. Codex's Rust interface is sleek and quick, but not quite as feature rich. That said, both integrate cleanly with VS Code and things like Cursor, so if you spend most of your time in Editor, they're equally easy to use. So I previously made a dedicated video diving deep into Claude Code itself and how to get the most out of it. I'll likely do the same with Codex in the future. This video is more of a direct comparison, but if you're especially curious about Claude, that breakdown is also worth checking out. The main question though is which should you go for? With Codex CLI, it's perfect if you want cutting edge performance, hosted agents with Codex Cloud, and cheaper access through the Plus or Pro subscription. Claw Code is better if you value a more polished, customizable tool that feels mature and enterprise ready. Both are excellent choices. Right now, Codex edges ahead on some of the benchmarks when it comes to precision and code reviewing, but Claude, in my opinion, excels when it comes to kind of more general purpose UI specific work. Overall though, personally, I don't think you can go wrong with each one, but if you really want to get the most out of these tools, I'd recommend doing a little bit of mixing and matching. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. If you want to keep up to date with all of the latest AI releases and important updates, like I mentioned earlier, feel free to subscribe to my weekly email newsletter, which you can find a link to in the description. As always, if you enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate if you could like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.